Hi, my name is Dr. Harry Witchell, and this is part two of Rapid Interpretation of Arterial Blood Gases. Let's move on to another example. Here's example two. The patient has a pH of 7.41, a pCO2 of 8 kilopascals, a PO2 of 12 kilopascals, and a base excess of plus 4.6. Here's a little question to get you starting thinking. The arterial blood gases for this patient might suggest one, uncompensated acidosis, two, uncompensated alkalosis, three, fully compensated acidosis, or four, fully compensated alkalosis. Why not take a few seconds to determine an answer and commit to that answer by writing it down? Right, welcome back. This patient has fully compensated alkalosis. Let's go through now the entire process to see how we determined that. So the first step is to label what the pH, the pCO2, the PO2, and the base excess affects on the blood. So here we see that the pH is 7.41. That's in the neutral range, so it's having no effects on the blood. The pCO2 is 8 kilopascals. That is above the pCO2 normal range of 4.7 to 6 kilopascals, so that is acidic. The PO2, as we suggested before, is always ignored. In this case, it happens to be in the normal range, but in any event, it would be neutral. And the base excess here is plus 4.6. That's outside the normal range of minus 2 to plus 2. Therefore, this is driving the patient toward an alkalotic range. Now we move on to step three. We look to see whether or not this patient is compensated. To determine compensation, we determine whether or not the CO2 and base excess have opposite effects. So first we see that the pCO2 is acid. The base excess is driving the effect toward base. Therefore, these are opposite, and this is compensated. The next question is whether or not this compensation is fully compensated or partially compensated. To determine that, we look at whether the pH is in the normal range or not in the normal range. Here we see that the pH is in the normal range, therefore this is fully compensated. The next step is to determine whether or not this is acidosis or alkalosis. Because this patient is fully compensated, not surprisingly, the patient's pH is in the normal range. However, the patient's pH is 7.41. That is above 7.40, therefore this patient is alkalotic. This is fully compensated alkalosis. The final question is whether or not this is a respiratory effect or a metabolic effect. That is by uh, metabolic effects by the kidney, the GI tract, or the liver. Here we look to see what is going to match alkalosis. We see that it's the base excess that matches the alkalosis. Therefore, this is a metabolic effect. So here we see we've got fully compensated metabolic alkalosis, and that's the final answer for this example. What does this mean? Well, fully compensated metabolic alkalosis means that the, either the kidneys or possibly the liver or the GI tract are causing alkalosis. Fully compensated means that the lungs are attempting to compensate. Now, while this means that there's been time for compensation, it turns out the lungs can compensate relatively quickly just by changing breathing. Because the lungs are compensating, in this case, they're not eliminating enough CO2. That means they're through a homeostatic effect. It's not a pathological effect that the CO2 is high. It also means that there's a low gas exchange rate. That probably means that the compensation is leading to a decreased level of oxygen. Now, this could be caused by an adverse effect of loop diuretics when they lead to hypokalemia. Combined with homeostatic hypoventilation, that is the patient is breathing too slowly as in a homeostatic way. Let's look at a third example. In example three, your patient's pH is 6.95, which is quite low. The pCO2 is 9.1 kilopascals, which is quite high. The PO2 is 8 kilopascals, which is quite low. And the base excess is minus 5.1, which is quite negative, well outside the, the main range. So our first step is to label what's going on. So here we see that the pH is definitely acid. The pCO2 is driving it to acid. Oxygen, whatever its effect, we always write down neutral. And the base excess, because it's a negative base excess, that means it's acidotic. 
So here we see that the CO2 is acidotic and the base excess is acidotic. These are not opposites. Therefore, this is uncompensated. So now let's consider this question. In this patient, the arterial blood gases suggest 1. Metabolic acidosis, 2. Metabolic alkalosis, 3. Fully compensated acidosis, or 4. Combined respiratory and metabolic acidosis. Take a few seconds to make a decision and commit by writing down the answer. Right. This is combined respiratory and metabolic acidosis. Let's go through the rest of the process to determine how we came to that conclusion. So remembering that this patient has an acid pH, an acid CO2, the O2 as always is neutral, and the base excess is acid. And we know that this patient, because both the CO2 and the base excess have acid effects, are uncompensated. Since this is uncompensated, we can skip the step as to whether or not it's partially or fully compensated because it isn't compensated at all. The next question is whether this is acidosis or alkalosis. Well, here we can plainly see that the pH is well in, into the acid range, so this is acidosis. The next question is whether or not this is metabolic or respiratory or combined. Well, first we have to do is we have to find what matches this acidosis. Is it the CO2? the base excess, both. Here we see that the PCO2 matches the acidosis and the base excess matches the acidosis. That means it's combined. And here we get rid of the uncompensated and what we see is this is combined respiratory and metabolic acidosis. What does that mean? Well, combined respiratory and metabolic acidosis means that both the lungs and the kidneys or liver and GI tract are causing acidosis. Now, this is much more common in hospitalized and critically ill patients because no physiological compensation is occurring. Two pathological processes are overlaid on top of one another. So what this might be, although there are many different possibilities, this might be a COPD patient in hospital who develops shock and lactic acidosis. Well, I hope these three examples have helped you to determine how to interpret arterial blood gases. Thank you for listening.